Hi everyone, it's Elise from Kid and Clatter Online Coloring Classes and I'm here today with a fun tutorial for you all to color up this gorgeous stamp, Heart Cupcake Marcy by La La Land Crafts. So if you're just joining us, the reason for me doing this tutorial today, I don't usually do a lot of YouTube tutorials, is because we're actually currently celebrating reaching 15,000 members in our Facebook group, which is amazing. So I wanted to say thank you all so much for helping us achieve this amazing milestone. And so for our party this weekend, we've got lots of giveaways and freebies and things happening. If you are watching this video at the time that our party is live. And I thought that I'd do a really fun coloring video tutorial for you all just to jump in and color with me. It may be great if you haven't been able to try one of our classes before. And it's just a fun little project to put into practice some of the skills that you've been learning in your classes. Now we'll be going through all different techniques here today. We're going to be looking at basic skin, hair and clothing techniques. Now if you are brand new to using your alcohol markers, make sure you head to our website www.kitandclouder.com. I'll pop the address down below as well because we have a free Markers 101 class there for you all. Now in this class we go through blending, light source, color theory and how to create color blends for Copics and Spectrum Noir, Pro Marker and other brands as well and that's a really great starting step if you're brand new to coloring. I know it can be overwhelming when we're new to, to coloring because it is an art technique. There are a lot of fundamentals here that we need to learn to help us grow so it can feel a little bit overwhelming at the start but if you head over there and check this class out it will be a great starting point and this one here today as well it's a great one for beginners or even if you do have a bit of coloring experience just to go over those fundamentals and refresh that technique it helps you to become a better colorist so you'll find all the colors and the information below i've printed up my stamp at 10 and a half centimeters and i'll pop that information as well below for you but you can print her at whatever size you like this way you can use it for all your cards and your other projects as well Okay, let's get ready to color. So you should have your image all printed out, ready to go. Now I've printed mine here on Express It Blending Card. Now it's my favorite card to use for alcohol markers. I find that it holds the most layers of ink. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to start with here today when I color my character is my skin. And I do always like to start with this step because it gives a good base to your image so you can see how the colors will interact with each other. Now, when we teach at Kid and Clatter, I teach using art fundamentals such as light source. And the number one thing I get asked is how can I make my coloring look more realistic? And light source is how we achieve that. So light source is when we show where the light comes down and hits part of an object. So where the sun comes and hits first, that's our highlight. So our lightest part of an object. The opposite of that is our shadow, so where the light hits last. Again, light source is an actual art technique and it does take time to learn. So don't worry if that's new to you and it's a little bit confusing. Remember, check out the Markers 101 class and we do break it down with some actual exercise techniques as well, which is nice and fun to follow along with. But one of the key things that I did want to go through today, and this is sort of our Kid and Clouder trademark special technique, <laughs> What I'm going to show you today is cast shadows. So this is what I like to show in every single class. So grab a pen and pop it over your hand. So can you see there the shadow that's fallen on my hand? That right there is a cast shadow. It's a shadow that's cast by an object in front or above, which is my marker, onto an object below or behind, which is my hand. And what that actually helps to do is to show distance between objects. The closer my objects are together, the darker and harder my shadow is. The further apart they get, notice how the shadow becomes lighter and more dispersed and soft. So that indicates that the objects are further apart. So that's very important. Every image that you color is going to be made up of several different objects and each will cast their own shadow. So this is the first thing we always need to look at with our coloring. And again, it's okay if you find this a little bit hard. Every time we practice, every time we go through this in class, it's going to become second nature to you the more you do this. But at the start, I understand it can be a little bit overwhelming because it's new information. So just follow along here today and then we can work on practicing this together. 
Okay, so firstly with my skin, I'm going to start with E000, which is my lightest color. And I'm just going to do a base over the face and the neck first to begin with here. Now I'm just holding the marker like I would use it with the standard writing pressure. And now what I'm going to do is use the side of the marker, not the very tip, using the side. And I'm just going to apply nice big broad strokes over my entire face. Work quickly and evenly. You don't need to push the marker down to get a lot of ink on the page. It's just about laying down that base color just as a starting point. So you don't need to take your time. You don't need to make sure it's super neat. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab what I call the scary marker, which is our E04. Now E04 is a little bit darker. And the reason why we use a darker color like this is to show that cast shadow. So you see there that shadow, it's darker than my skin tone. So that's very important. It's why we show a darker color here. Otherwise, we don't actually see that there's a shadow forming between objects. All we see is just a standard sort of form shadow, which is just being away from the light. So with this color here, what I'm going to do is pop this where my car shadows are. So I can see automatically that the hair is sitting above her face. So I'm going to grab this color and just trace around that object that's above onto the object that's below, which is my face. Now, this color, we have a tendency to go super duper light because it is quite dark. Now, I want you to add a little bit of thickness today. If that's usually you with a very, very light um, layer. It's a lot easier to blend and it will blend when you use a thicker stroke. We don't want much of this in the cheeks. It's not a blush color. So you can see I'm applying it just rounding around the sides just a little bit. The next thing that I can see as well is that my head is sitting above the neck. So because the head's above, it's going to cast a nice big shadow back. So I'm popping in the car shadow straight below there. And you can see already that that separated the two objects. And I'm just applying just a touch down the side of the sleeves. Now, I'm not going to do a huge amount of detail in the face. I might do a little bit in the eyebrow here. Just going to leave it as is so it's nice and simple. Feel free to add any details that you like as well here today. Now it's time to blend. And I'm going to grab my E11. So I'm working from dark to light. And all I'm doing here is just coming straight over the top of my E04. But I'm focusing multiple layers over where the E04 has ended. And you'll see there what happens is that color starts to soften out, that line between the colors. I'm keeping my strokes nice and light. But I'm layering up multiple times until that line softens down. Now, please remember as well that your markers are an actual medium. It's not a digital medium here today. It's not going to look 100% perfect. So by blending, 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 trying to remove all the lines, you might just be um, wasting your time a little bit. It's okay to live with a few little lines and variations here on your blend. But notice, because I've got a little bit of thickness to that EO4, it does make it a lot easier to soften down. Now, if you're new to using a lot of colors in your skin tone, this is going to look very, very dark. I can assure you, though, I'll bring back my original Marcy. See how it all starts to make sense when other colors are in place. So this is the exact same color, but it looks really dark and scary at the moment. It's going to make a lot more sense once we've done all the rest of the shading here as well for you. So don't throw it out, don't restart, don't think it's wrong if it's not looking quite right on the page. Mine definitely looks a bit scary. E21 is my next color, so again, working down from dark to light. Now, if you're confused on the color theory while we're doing E21 after E11, make sure, again, you check out that Markers 101 class because the first number here does not mean that it's necessarily darker if the number is higher. We always go by that second color with our Copics. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just applying multiple strokes over where my E11 has ended. Soften down that line. And if you need to, if you end up creating new lines, come back very quickly and blend the rest of the area. Now that's going to be different every time you color. Try not to overthink this step too much. I remember when I was learning at the start and be like, so where do I put the color? How far do I go back? You're just going to learn with practice. And today it might not be quite where you'd like it to be, but you're a step ahead of where you were yesterday. It's important not to give up because it's difficult. 
when something's difficult, like learning an instrument, learning a new sport, things like this, that's actually when we have the best achievements. So it's definitely worth sticking with and it's worth learning skills that challenge us and are a little bit tricky. You can do this even if today it doesn't quite happen. So notice that with every color we do, we're stepping in further towards the center of the face, which is our highlight color. So we're slowly extending further in every time. If you haven't been extending your colors further out, make sure you extend them actually visibly further than the last color so we can see them extending. Now this is E00, and again, you'll see that I'm coloring over the line of this previous color and then back as needed to blend everything out but I'm keeping my strokes again nice and light and then I'm extending further in toward the middle of the face. Again, my skin still looks really dark at this point even though we've been doing a lot of blending. It's totally okay. Okay, coming into my last color and it's back to that lightest one, the E000, and all I'm doing is just popping in straight over the top of the previous colors here, very light strokes, and then bringing over the remaining area of the face. Notice that this is just softening everything down and it should be blending it all together. Now it's very important to notice that with my stroke, I'm using more the side of the marker, not that very tip. It helps me to get a broader coverage. And so we don't see any of the little strokes as well. It's all looking nice and soft. Okay, so that's my face then done. I'm going to add a touch of blush while the ink's still wet on the page. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm adding a touch of R22, just a very small amount toward the inside of the cheeks here on either side. And then grab my R20, which is a little bit lighter, and I'm extending strokes straight over the top and extending a little further out. Now the type of stroke I'm doing here is called feathering. It's when I pop my marker very lightly on the page and then I extend out and lift the marker as I exit the stroke. Again, for more on the blending techniques, make sure you check out the Markers 101 class as well. We go through that very slowly and easily. Now just to remove any lines here, I do go back and grab my E000, my lighter skin color, and then I'm just going to shade over where that pink has ended multiple times until my lines soften. And you might need to come back and do one more quick layer over the face, just so you don't have any lines sort of showing through, it's all smooth. And that's how we add some nice rosy cheeks. Let's go through and color her arms and legs here now. So I'm just going to move this one up the page. So starting with my E000 and we're going to add our broad coverage layers over the top. Now I'm going to do her arms and legs in the same step here. If you prefer just to do the arms and then just to do the legs, you absolutely can. The key thing when you do your coloring is be confident. Don't take too long. Try not to push that marker down into the page. That's typically when we add too many layers of ink. So we want to speed ourselves up a little bit. Work quicker and without thinking it through too much. It tends to take the pressure off a little bit and we tend to, to do everything a little bit lighter. Now E04, adding this to my cast shadow areas. Now the body is in front, her arms are sitting behind there. So I'm coming through and adding this alongside the body. Now remember, it's not super duper thin. We want a little bit of thickness. It's going to help us to blend this out. And again, the more you practice, the more comfortable you're going to get with this color here today. It's all right if things don't really work out. But it's, if it's your first try, or even your 10th or 20th try, it took me a lot of practices to get to where I am with my coloring now. Lots of years Hundreds and hundreds of images. 
Anyone who's coloring you admire is going to tell you the same thing. It just takes time to learn. And there's nothing wrong with how long it takes you on your journey. We're all different and we all have different backgrounds as well. Now notice with the legs, the inside of my legs here, I've done as darker. And I've also done the inside of the arms here to darker as well. Now, when we do our light source, our light source, I'm only going to cover this really quickly because again, we go through the Sun Markers 101 in a lot of detail. What I've colored here today is with ambient light and ambient light is like the sun up in the sky. Now imagine the sun is a big cone of light that shines down on your image. When you do your coloring, Typically, you're going to be using ambient light. It's the most attractive light for portraiture. But the cone from the sun is so big that comes down over the whole image that both sides are going to be ended up illuminated in this type of sun, this type of light source. So when you think about that, when you've got your legs here, the sides is where your sun is going, your light hits first on those side areas and the tops of the arms when they're held out horizontally. So in the middle where the light's not reaching, these this is where it's darker. So that's just a quick explanation of why the shading is, is like that. When you work with a spotlight, like a torch or something like a candle or something like that, that's when your light becomes a lot more um, focused on one side, but we're not doing that here today. We're just doing a nice big cone of light. E11 is my next color, and I'm just popping this over the top. Again, blending out, applying multiple strokes as needed, focusing on the line of where the EO4 has ended until you see this soften down. Okay, next color is going to be my E21 and I'm continuing to blend. Now you will notice today that my image is on a slight angle. If you've never done one of our tutorials before, I do record them on a slight angle like this just because when we get to find detail like the hair. I know everyone wants to be able to see every little aspect that I'm doing. So this small angle here is going to allow you to always see the tip of the of the marker here. Now again, I mentioned at the start of the video your paper that you're using. It's very important that you use a good bleed-proof blending cardstock for your alcohol markers, no matter which brand that you're using. I'm about to move on to E00 now. Now when you use alcohol markers, bleed-proof cardstock allows the ink to stay on the surface of the paper for longer. That's what allows us to blend. If you're using a different cardstock, just a regular cardstock, what happens is the ink actually goes through the fibers of the paper quicker. And that's when your ink can look quite heavy on the page. And it's a little bit harder to blend. And it use, also uses up more ink. So even if budget is a big concern, your ink's actually more expensive than papers. So you'll be wasting more money by not getting the good stuff. And I know having an extra expense is frustrating, but it is really important. It's just like your classes. A class and good paper and the accessories to help, they're investments to help you get the most of your expensive coloring supplies. E triple zero here. And let's face it, the markers, no matter what brand you're using, they're not cheap. Let's get them out, let's get you using them, let's get you feeling confident and we'll use the right products to get us there. It's a very small, classes and paper, very small investment when it comes to your markers and your art to help you achieve the right results. Okay, so for the lips here, I'm starting with RV34 and what I'm going to do is I'm just popping a very small amount of this color on either side of the lower lip and along the top there. And I'm going to come straight through the middle of the top lip 
and then either side. So what I'm actually doing is creating shadow and highlight spots. So still creating contrast, even in the small area. Now I know coloring small details like this isn't for everyone. And especially if you're using something like a bullet tip marker, where it is a little bit harder to get that detail. There is nothing wrong with just adding a slick of this color over the entire lip area. She's still going to look gorgeous. So if you're not quite comfortable with that today, just go ahead and apply the color all over. But if you are, you can follow along with me and add these highlight details in. Now I'm grabbing my RV32 and I'm just blending out just a very small amount, working on the very tip of my marker. I'm aiming to leave a small amount of white in the middle of the lower lip and then either side of the top lip. So just take your time, work slowly. And again, if you're not comfortable with this, not comfortable with fine lines, just one slick of color over the entire area is more than okay. Okay, so that's my skin all done. For the next part of the video, what I'm gonna do is focus on coloring up her hair. In this part of the video here today, let's go ahead and color up the hair. Now I'm going to be showing you some very basic light source techniques. We have a skin and hair class that goes into hairstyles and details and a lot of information. It's a great class for pencils and markers. Again, we always include all your different marker brand and pencil brand color combinations as well. But today we're just going to run over it very quickly because there is so much theory there that helps you to understand this for different images. One thing that I do want to run over very quickly is the type of stroke that we use for coloring hair. So I'm just going to move her out of the way and I've just got a scrap piece of paper here. Now when I show hair, I show using strokes to create texture. It is a hard technique. It is something that purely just takes time. But what I want you to focus on today is not on the thickness of your strokes, but instead on technique. So what I do here is I hold the marker nice and close to the nib. Notice that it's resting on my third finger here. I didn't realize this was something I did until we held a live retreat in Australia and um, people noticed that this is where I held it and it actually kept my marker off the page a little bit more, which kept my stroke lighter. So that might be something you want to think about because a lot of people have said it just helped them a lot. So I'm going to be holding it like this, nice and close to the nib for control. I'll be laying down my marker on the page and lifting it up to get that flicked stroke. So lay it down softly and flick, softly and flick. Try not to focus on the thickness of the stroke, but I want you to get it Oops, nice and long here. If your strokes are very small and you're getting this, I want you to relax, relax the hand, relax your grip, allow the marker to just softly hold there and lift your hand off the table. Get it nice and long, confident and quick. It helps. That's what we're trying to aim for with the stroke. Again, it's going to take time. What we do when we do technique is we lay down the stroke. So imagine this is the head here, this is the part in the hair. And I'm going to come in and lay down my strokes here. Now notice that I'm leaving gaps between the strokes. What I see a lot is people do this. Notice how there's no strokes here. This is very hard to get a very fluid motion because you can imagine if I grab my next color and I come over the top, all I'm doing is getting bands of color. And even though I'm doing strokes, it looks like my strokes are very thick and it's very hard to get variation. Whereas if I come back here and I start adding in some strokes, some will fall in between, some will be a little bit longer, but I'm actually starting to break it up and get texture. So we wanna make sure that we separate our strokes with every color that we lay down. This is what I want you to focus on today. Not the thickness of the strokes, but that separation. Separate your fingers, separate your strokes. Okay, so let's bring our girl back. Okay, so I'm going to start here today with E29. 
First things first, we know that we want to add in cast shadows. So that's what we talked about earlier when something is sitting over something else. So looking at the hair here, we want to break it down. And I can see just by looking at the outline of the image that this curly swirly part is sitting in front of where the hair is pulled back on the side. So what I'm going to do is grabbing this E29 nice and thick line the whole way around this portion. You can even do the whole thing. Cast shadow that whole way around. I'm also going to add a shadow through the part of the hair. That's where the hair sort of curves in like this, which is furthest from the light. And then we can add a shadow around the little bow. Now I'm going to come back and do this swirly part a little bit later. So we'll just do these big areas for now. That part's a little bit trickier. Okay, now we're ready to add our form shadows. So that was cast shadows that we added there. So it's separating the hair down into sections. The next part is form shadows. So form shadows, when we go back to talking about light source like we were earlier. So remember where the sun comes down and hits part of the image, that's our highlight, the lightest part. That's typically big parts of the hair that curve away from the image. So a big man like this, imagine my strokes of light come down and they hit these curved out areas first. That's a highlight. The opposite of that are shadows. And these are parts of the hair that curve in toward the middle, furthest from the light. We've already established that our part here is one of those areas that's a shadow. So I'm just going to start in the part and lay down strokes following the shape of the hair that the artist has drawn. So following these lines over and leaving a gap between them. And now we'll come back on the other side and do the same thing. And you can see I'm actually extending my strokes in toward the parts that are curving away from the hair. Now you can follow this through and extend from the shadow areas the whole way around. Now as the areas get smaller here on the sides, I want my strokes to become a little shorter as well. Just do what you're comfortable with. You might have more or less strokes than me here today, but regardless, what you're doing is not wrong. It's all practice and we all color a little bit differently, even with the same techniques. So please remember, your aim is not for your coloring to look like mine today. I've had a lot of practice and now it's your turn to just put that in as well. Now we're going to come back from this shadow area here and extend some strokes toward the middle. We want to make sure we're not meeting the strokes in the middle here. So if you are a bit long with these ones, you're going to want to make these ones a little bit shorter because we want to see a highlight between them. Again, though, if it doesn't happen today and you've made a mistake, it's okay. It means you're learning something new and it means you can try a different step next time. Always finish an image through. Assess what you are and you aren't happy with. Again, it's very important to assess what you are happy with as well. And then you can start to learn, put into practice new techniques for next time. Starting in the little piggy tails here so we can see one nice big bump where our light's going to come down and hit this first. So the whole way through the, here is our highlight and we'll do our shadows on either side, make it nice and easy. So you can see here adding my strokes and then come back around and extend toward that middle here as well. All right, ready to move on to my next color, and that's going to be E25. So we're working from dark to light, and our strokes are going to start always in our shadow area, but extend a little bit further toward the highlight every time. Now, I'm just not really worrying about where my previous strokes are, but I'm following the same shape. So I start in that shadow area and extend my strokes out toward the highlight again. Mm 
Okay, now let's do the other side. Now remember at any point, if you feel stuck or frustrated or something isn't quite working, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. The best way to reach me is either on Facebook Private Messenger or through our website, kiddingclouder.com. Just click the About or Contact button and then you can pop me an email there or it's just elise at kiddingclouder.com. And I'm more than happy to go through anything with you in a lot of detail. In our classes, they do come with one-on-one personalized tutoring and feedback. So this is something I do a lot with all of our students in class because it's important to me that you don't just do a class and that's it and you're sort of stuck trying to figure it out by yourself. There's nothing worse than doing a video like on YouTube or somewhere else and not quite understanding why yours is not looking like the finished outcome. So if you haven't tried one of our classes before or you have and you haven't used the feedback facility, please do so. It's just me. There's, I don't have anyone else that works with me or anything on this. So you're not having to deal with a whole bunch of strangers. It's always me that will work with you together. And we can go in as much detail as you like, whether it's a quick chat, whether it's sharing coloring and photos or Skyping or live video, all of that is more than fine with me. My goal is to help you feel most comfortable to keep learning more. And I know it takes time. I've been there. So I'm happy to share as many secrets to help. So E23 is my next color and it's the same thing. You can see I'm just extending from the shadow in toward that middle a little bit further and again leaving a gap between my strokes here. It's harder in these smaller areas because we don't see the gap or we don't see the stroke but just lift your marker up and leave a gap after each one and it will help. I'm coming back here and just adding a little bit of shading around that car shadow as well just so it doesn't look so much like a big line. I want it to be a little softer. That's helped. So in our classes as well, we've got two different types of classes. We've got technique classes. So our skin and hair class, which I just talked about, is a technique class. It's a class that's like a, I like to call them reference encyclopedias. They're huge. They have so much information. So it can help you with many different images. They're like guidebooks. It's just a great tool. You can either work through it step by step or pick it up when you're coloring another image and look at a particular section that corresponds with the image. And it's a great way to learn a lot of new techniques and a lot of skills for you to really grow your coloring. And then we have monthly classes. And monthly classes are like doing a project in a store. So we go through step by step to color up a little scene together. E21 is next and just applying this over the whole area again leaving gaps between yes so our monthly classes like doing little projects together which is a lot of fun you can use we use a particular image but the techniques applied is the same as your technique classes the techniques that you learn can be applied to absolutely any image so even if you don't love the image that much it's still very very helpful and relevant to anything that you color and these are great still for beginners as well. We go through step by step. Just make sure that you appreciate how long you've been coloring versus how long I've been coloring. And I really enjoy them because you can do them even though it's monthly. Again, it's all, all of our classes are do at your own pace, all downloadable. So you've got forever to go back and learn from them and apply these techniques to other images. Okay, so that's the back portion of the hair done. We're now going to come into these front areas, which are a little bit trickier. Now I'm going to start with E29. Now I want you to try and focus on that separating of the stroke. Don't focus on the thickness. But this area, it's okay if it doesn't quite happen today. Please just remember that. I know I had a lot of trouble with these images when I was first learning. And that's why I wanted to show you in particular, because it's one of those ones that we don't really know how to tackle. 
E29 first, and I'm just going to break it down into sections with our car shadows. So if I start at the top and I can sort of follow along here, I see that it comes, this section comes to a point and then curves back around. So what this indicates to me is that this whole area is one section that's sitting above this area here below. So we know that whatever's below is going to get the car shadow on it. So just tracing around there that car shadow. Same on this side, so I can see if I start at the top, I can see this section comes over and intersects with this section here on the left. The section on the left looks like it's sitting behind. So all I'm doing is tracing around the section above. Remember your shadow always falls in the area that's behind. Coming down and I can see as well that I have an intersection here. If you don't see these today, it's okay. Again, it just takes time to learn about light source. Copying while you're learning is a really great way to learn. Just always ask yourself why. Why are we separating it like this? And that's how you're going to have a good understanding. Sorry if I'm repeating myself a lot. I just, I know the, the sort of areas that people tend to get stuck on. And I've gotten stuck on them as well. So I just want to remind you throughout your classes that it is okay to just be learning. Now that we've broken this down, we can tackle each section at a time. Now I just wanted to touch very quickly on how to tackle these curves. Now I spoke very quickly about this before. So if I've got my face here, I'm just drawing, this is just very quick. Now, any areas that protrude out away from the face, I'm just going to draw a smiley on her. <laughs> so any areas that are protruding out away from the face, this is where our light hits first. So these are highlights. Any areas extending back in toward the face, that's where the light hits last and these are darkest. Very, very important. Even if you want to draw this on a little piece of paper to have next to you, going away from the face, so we can call it a highlight, so it's lightest. And then in toward the face is our shadow and is darkest. Let's apply this to practice here. So looking at the image, so see here, a curve away from the face. That's a highlight. And the whole way through here in this one section, I'm going to make that highlight. Curving in toward the face here, that's a shadow. So we'll do that whole way curving in toward the face. All right, let's start. You can follow along now. Just do however many strokes you're comfortable with. Again, you might have more or less than what I do here today, but it's all practice and it's all a forward step. So I'm extending a short stroke down toward the highlight. Now I've got here very quickly a little shadow. So I'm going to pull in a stroke and then up toward that mountain. And you can follow this along. So I'm applying very short strokes here. It's going to look a little bit messy, to be honest with you. Mine looks a little bit messy. I'm extending them up toward the highlight. Now I'll come into this next section. Working in those little curves and extending up to where it curves out. And I'm just doing a few little ones here at the bottom. Again, it's going to look a little messy. Mine looks messy too. Totally okay. Still quite a long way to go. Come down into this next area. Now a little tip as well is I find it easier to do my strokes away from myself. So turning your image around so it's facing away from you, I find is very helpful. In fact, I might do that with you might be easier for you to follow along if you've turned it upside down as well. Okay, now coming into this next little valley. So remember curving in toward the face. And then you can just follow around all of the areas here. Now as we add more colors, 
and we can come through and layer up again, it's going to make a lot more visual sense. This is the hardest step. Now, if you do feel more comfortable trying a lighter color first, you absolutely can. There is no right or wrong way whether you do dark to light or light to dark. Dark to light uses less ink, so it saves you a bit of money and time. But they give you the exact same outcome. So if you do feel a little bit more confident going lighter first, by all means, please feel free. Okay. That's our first step. Now, I know it's messy, but can you see here already we've got movement kind of happening here? We've got dark light, dark light. It's sort of showing that undulating sort of wavy look. That's what we want here. Okay, next area. So coming down from the shadow, extending toward the highlight. And into this larger area here as well, same thing. Okay, next part of the image. We're just doing that same thing. Okay, now we're ready to blend out. So the next color is E25. We're just working our way from dark to light here now. And all we're doing is starting in that shadow area and extending the stroke a little bit further toward the highlight. Now these areas are quite small. So again, only do what you're comfortable with. If you've got less strokes than I do or you don't get the same gaps that I do here today, it's okay. I have been practicing here a long time. <laughs> lots and lots of images. So just make sure you go easy on yourself. Remember never to compare with what you see others doing as well. So I'd love to see you all share your coloring when you're finished over in our Facebook group. But there's going to be people you see who will do a really beautiful job, which is fabulous. And they might have been coloring also for years and years. They might have taken a lot of our classes before. So if you see other people's coloring and wonder why yours doesn't look like theirs, just remember that they come from a different background to where you're currently at now and a different amount of practice level. So there's nothing stopping you from getting there, but you need to put in that practice first to build up your technique. And that's exactly what we're doing here today, practicing, going over the video. You can revisit this video again and practice again. Every time we go over technique, it helps us learn. And this is one thing that's really important. A lot of people don't understand why technique is important because with art, of course, there's the quote that art has no rules and we can do anything. But there are certainly fundamentals that really help. And when we're starting to learn and when we wanting to learn more about coloring, we can get to a certain level by ourselves. But then to keep growing forward, understanding art principles and theories and understanding new techniques, even if you're just a card maker, I'm just a card maker, I'm not, I don't have an art background or anything, but understanding those principles that's what helps you to grow. It helps you to succeed more in your hobby. So don't ever become complacent as well and feel like you don't need to know those kind of techniques. 
if you love coloring and you want this to become a hobby or you love your card making and you just want nicer coloring for your cards, it's something you can absolutely learn. You don't have to be an artist. Have a lot of fun just being a hobbyist card maker. It's exactly how I started. Okay, so now you can see the more colors I add here, the more movement I start to get. So it started off very messy at the start, but now it's clearly starting to look broken down into the areas. So again, it's just about working. You don't ever judge halfway through. E23 is next, and it's the same thing. I'm just extending a little bit further. Try to leave those gaps where you can. Just do what you're comfortable with. Okay, and now my next color is E21. And again, you're just popping through the entire area, leaving gaps between your strokes. I'm not covering the entire area. You'll see that some areas leave tiny little white slithers. I'm just covering it so it looks nice, but the, the lighter little bits of white that peek through help to aid in the variation there and the texture. So that's my hair all done. Now, one step I do like to do is I actually like to repeat everything all over again for a second time. I find that it keeps a lot more depth by doing it for a second time. So, um, have a go with this. If you're happy with where it is now, you can absolutely just leave it there. But I'm going to go through and do that second layer, and then you should be able to see that that gives me a little bit more depth and shadow there just to amp up my contrast. And I just, I find it pops a little bit more. So I like to do this. So you can either follow along with me or get ready for the next step.
Okay, and that's my hair there all finished up. In the next part of the video, we're going to go ahead and color up her outfit. In this part of the video tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and color up her outfit. Now I'm going to be showing you today how to add some extra folds detail on a quite basic dress like this. So you can go ahead and just color the folds that are already here using the same techniques we're going through today. But I did want to show you, you can see here the difference between the two. Move her over. Notice how we've got larger folds here, but on this one, I've added a little detail in between the folds that are currently drawn. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do here today. Okay, so again, working with just our ambient light source. So on this side of the dress, our folds are going to get lighter toward the left. And as the folds change direction along the bottom, on the right side of the dress, the folds will get lighter toward the right. Now I'm starting with R39, which is my darkest color here today. And I'm going to create a really pretty vintage ready pink sort of color here today. Firstly, starting with my car shadow, just going underneath the bow here. Now you'll notice with this color blend, I'm going to jump around in the color families and the numbers here today. Again, for more information on this, check out your markers one on one class to understand how we create color blends. But please feel free to use this color blend anytime as well. Okay, so now to make it easy, firstly I'm going to come up the folds that have already been drawn in. Now I am making my line work a little bit thick. You don't need to make it super duper thin. Notice that I've curved the bottom edge here as well. That helps to get a, give a bit of substance to the fold and shows where it curves sort of in toward the middle a little bit here. And you can do the same on the other side. Now you can either do one fold at a time or do the whole dress like I'm doing here. It's up to you what you feel comfortable with. Now when you get to this middle fold, now this is facing the front. So what I'm going to do is come up both sides of that artist strong line. And now swapping sides on these folds on the right. So again, we're just going over the technique very quickly here today. We go through this in a lot more detail in our actual classes. We do have a clothing class. It's very in-depth to understand how folds work. I'm going to add some extra detail here in the middle of the folds. Now, holding the marker nice and close to the nib. Again, if you're not comfortable with this, you can just blend out these normal folds here that you've already done. But let's have an experiment. Let's challenge ourselves. And I'm drawing a line straight through the middle here. It's okay if you've got a little bit of thickness to your line. Remember, thin lines only come with a lot of practice. And then what I'm doing is I'm thickening it up at the bottom, making it almost triangular in shape. Grounds my fold there. So this is a little bit different. It's, it's not really following the actual technique for where the folds would sit in a dress. It's just a fun way to add a little detail and for me to show you how to draw in folds on an image. So in the middle here, I'm creating that triangular shape on both sides. And now we swap to the side here on the right and then create that triangular shape toward the right. So we talk a lot about things like tension points and the style of folds and pleats and everything like that in your clothing class. So again, today is just quick and fun learning some new techniques. RV34, so this was quite a nice berry red sort of colour here for our shadows, coming down into the pink for our mid-tones. So RV34 and I'm just coming straight over the top of the R39. Applying multiple strokes again, you want to soften that line between the colors, just like we did in the face. Once you're happy with that, what we're going to do is blend out each of these folds. Now, if you've only colored the one along the side, all you're going to do is yours is probably going to be a bit thicker than mine because you're going to have a lot more area to color up. But again, focus on that line of where that previous color has ended. And then blend over the remaining area so there's no lines. Same thing with the one next to it. We're going to blend out this line 
toward the left here. We want each fold with treating them as individual objects. Each section here is going to get lighter toward the left. So come straight over the top of the line of where this last color has ended, multiple strokes, and blend up. Apply more as needed. Do the same on this next fold here. Again, we're still blending toward the left on this left side of her dress. We're about to change direction shortly. And a lot of the time to know when to change direction, you can actually see it in the way the artist has drawn the image. So here in this middle fold, it's not really orientated toward the left or right, it's straight on. So I'm just coming up the side here. And then through that middle fold, I'm going to come over both sides. Now you can see that the folds change direction here. We now want to get lighter toward the right. So I'm coming over this line, blending that out toward the right. Next color now is RV32. And we're just doing the same thing. Pop straight over the top of those previous colors. Start to blend out. So you can see I'm doing car shadow here first, just nice and quick. And then coming through each little fold. So again, you might need more or less strokes than I do. Just judge for yourself and keep blending until you see it soften. Now, we want to try not to come back and add too many layers over the very darkest color because what can happen is we can desaturate this. Now, what that means is we can pull away that darker pigment and it will look quite light. I'll show you what we can do to combat that at the end. My last color here now is RV10, nice and light, and you're just doing the same thing, just popping this straight over the top of the last color. Keep your strokes nice and light. The less color, the less layers of this color we do through the very highlight area, the more contrast we will have in the fold. So you can see right up to this very line, I've kept it quite light. If you can, if you're comfortable with folds and you've done a few classes before, try and leave your slither of white here. It'll make your folds pop a lot more. Okay, so I can see here now some of my detail is almost like a little bit fuzzy and soft. And that happens again, just like I mentioned before. My lighter colors have pulled away that darker pigment. So what I want to do is come back and repeat the previous steps. I'm starting with my darkest color, my R39. And just by repeating this previous step, it's going to help all of my shadows look a lot richer and my detail to look crisper. So you're literally repeating the exact same thing, just laying this color down over where you laid it previously. If you don't feel like you have any desaturation, everything's sitting pretty good, you can just leave it. Again, it's something that you can judge every time you color, because every time you do color, your blend's different. You might do a different amount of layers. It's different for me every time.
And now we're blending out RV34, so the next lightest color, and just this same thing. Apply over where the R39 has ended. Work on multiple strokes to soften that line work down. Now in our classes, you usually receive a full step-by-step -step instruction booklet as well, whether you do a technique class or a monthly class. So this today, this freebie is not going to come with a step-by-step -step booklet, but if you do prefer to learn this way or use it as a reference tool after class, I always go through, re-watch the video and actually write out the instructions based on your video. So even though it is, I would always recommend with us because our videos are so highly detailed that you do watch the video even if you're not a video person. But I know a lot of people just do the video booklets and really like their resources there as well. RV32 is next. So you're always going to get something super duper detailed. And these are the things that are different doing an online class to doing just a YouTube video super in-depth instruction which i hope is what you're taking away here today even though this is a free video and i'm skimming over a lot of topics in our other classes and our paid classes we go into so much depth and then you get your videos i always like to break them down into chapters as well so rather than sitting for one long period of time you've got little goals to achieve your booklets, and one-on-one -on -one help anytime. It's what I'm here for. So never feel nervous to reach out, even if you've just done this freebie today. But I'm always here to guide you through every aspect. It's really important that you don't ever feel nervous to reach out. So that's sort of what we do a little bit different at Kid and Cloud on why you might do a class over a YouTube video as well. RV10 is next, our lightest color. We do get a lot of questions about that. Why would I do a class? A lot of free content on YouTube. There is some great free content on YouTube, but it's not the same as doing a class. I hope you've been enjoying just coloring here today. Coloring is a really great form of mindfulness. So when there's a lot going on in your life and you feel like you don't have time to sit down and color or time to learn new things, that's actually precisely when it's the best time to do so because what it does is it forces you to slow down, to be in the moment, which is what mindfulness is, not worry about the past, not worry about the future, just appreciate now and it actually helps us to better cope with some of the stressful things going on around us. So make sure, this is why I always go on in our group, you know, make time for you even though you're busy and make it 15 minutes. You only need 15 minutes to get started. The reason why I do this is because it really does help. I've been there as well. It helps to deal with those tricky times. It settles the mind. So I heard little folds done in the in the dress here now. Let's move on to the rest of the outfit. Now, if you have just touched on this quickly, if you still feel like some of the areas are a bit desaturated, you can even grab this color and just really focus on the actual fold lines. And just, you don't even need to blend these out. And it's just crisped everything back up for us. That's just optional. Okay, coming into the rest of the dress. And I'm just going to apply some shading to the sides, which would be curving away from the light there as her body curves around. Now I'm going to come through and add a little bit of shading around the bow. You can see I've been a little bit messy in my coloring. I can see some pink on my 
ribbon area. And then I'm just going to add like a little V shape from the little straps here. RV34, time to blend out. Apply multiple strokes, soften down your lines, keep going until it's soft. And apply inside the little V. I'm just going to grab that R39 again and I'm going to add a touch to the heart. I'm adding from the middle over the left side there and then along the right side. And you can just blend that out with that RV34. Next color, RV32, continue to blend. It's going slowly in toward the middle each time. Applying through the middle of the whole V now. And I'm going to split my little postage stamp in half, do half of this color and finish off my heart. And now my RV10. And apply over the rest of the little sleeves and the heart as needed. Now you can repeat the previous steps as needed as well to build up the color depth. Okay, working on the green portion of her dress now. Okay, I'm adding a touch of G99 and I'm adding this to either side of the little ribbon, just in all of our shadow areas where we need to here. Coming into the bow and I'm going to apply a little cast shadow there where the, the ribbons are overlapping and I'm going to draw a line straight through. If you're not comfortable with a fine line, just apply down one side of the, of the ribbon here. And then I'm going to go through and draw a little V shape extruding from either side and straight up the middle there as well. Now you can come ahead and do this in the little bows in her hair too. So car shadow either side here and I'm going to draw that V shape. And then the V shape up through the middle. Before I move on from this color, I'm going to bring this straight underneath the pink. So car shadow onto those little scallop sash beneath. So even on these small areas, we can still add light and shade to create detail. And I'm just coming up the right hand side of each of these little scallops. And when we get to the middle, we can change direction and then start to come up the left. Okay, ready to blend out a little way now. G94 is next. Come straight over the top and extend a little further out. Not much, just a little. Now what I'm going to do is apply this color in between the V, so blending a little further in. You can even add just a touch along the bottom of the bow here as well. Just do what detail you're comfortable with in these smaller areas. 
So inside the V, and if you're comfortable adding just a little bit more around the edges, you can. It's okay if you're not, because when you come back with your lighter colors, you'll still get really nice contrast there, which shows that depth between objects. G21, and this color is a little bit lighter, and I apply it over my previous colors and extend in toward the middle. Now this is a really nice olivey blend, and I use this blend a lot just by itself, so without adding our last color. So you're welcome to just stick with this if you like the olivey blend, but if you want to brighten it up, once I'm finished with this color, I'm going to add a pop of YG03, which will transform the color blend. So I'll show you that in a moment. I'm just continuing my shading here, focusing on the inside of the bows. Adding a small amount around if you're comfortable with it. Now these little scallops are so small, so I'm just going to leave them and just add my brightest color at the end. And now it's YG03. And I'm starting in the highlight, and you can actually come back over all the colors. And look how much that transforms it. It's so beautiful and vibrant now. I'm bringing that over through the middle. And then a quick, just one quick layer through the highlight areas that are remaining. We don't want too many, we don't want it to become too dark. So you just add a quick little splash. And bring this color along the stamp line as well. And then come into the bows in her hair. And then down into the little sash. We're almost finished now. I'm going to come into the little cupcake and I'm just using that same green blend. I'm starting with G94 though and I'm applying just some strokes from the bottom of the cupcake wrapper. Now I can see here where it sort of curves in we want to add a little bit of shadow to show that movement. So I'm going to add it thicker along the sides here and then extend in to almost like a little line through the middle. And now we'll blend out. G21 next. Send up from the bottom toward the top and then over both sides of this little line through the middle. And then YG03 to blend. Now I did get a little bit on my finger. If you did what I did, just grab your E triple zero. You should be able to push that ink back away. Bring it back up to skin color. For the icing, grabbing E25 and just come car shadow beneath the icing here. And then some little dots for texture. Get that cakey sort of look happening. And then my E23, just dot that through there as well. RV32, and I'm going to add a little shadow beneath the heart. Then beneath each of these little swirls in the icing. Just come straight underneath those artist drawn lines. You can make these as dark or as light as you like. These colors in our classes or in the free tutorials are always optional and you can always adjust and change anything up to suit you and your favorite colors or your favorite look or if you're giving this card as a birthday card to someone else's favorite colors, totally okay. RV10 is next and I'm just softly blending out but I'm leaving the majority of the area as white because I just want it to look like a really light pink icing. Now if you do want to add some little sprinkles you can. With my RV32 I can just really lightly dab just the tip. I'm not pushing the marker down. I'm just allowing the tip to very lightly touch the page and that's creating some really small little dots. It indicates sort of a little sprinkly look and you can even grab your YG03 
and do some little green dots. You could even do multicolored ones here, like rainbow sprinkles. You can do whatever you like. To add some small detail to the letter, I grab E00 and just come along the side and the bottom here. It's very quick and easy, but I just wanted it to have something because I don't want it to be just plain white with every detail that's going on around it. Again, if you want like a vintage letter or a colored envelope, by all means, you can do whatever you like there. All we've got left are these cute little shoes. So I'm going to pop in. I'm going to add detail with my pinks. Now the bows here are tiny. So if you're not comfortable with the fine lines, again, you can just do one wash of color. But R39, draw the little V either side if you can and through the middle. And then your little shadows there on the ribbon. And then I'm going to blend out with RV32. It's only such a small amount, but we can't, We still want to see that we've got that additional detail like in the other parts of the outfit. Otherwise, it's going to look quite flat compared to every detail that you've just added in there. Coming into the bottom of the shoes, I've got W9. I'm just going to do these little black heels here, applying over the majority of the area. And then we'll blend in with W5. Now you can do her shoes any color as well. You can do them black if you prefer, or if you prefer a bright color here. If you want them black, you would just do the same technique that we've just done. I'm gonna do them in green. So I'm gonna start with G99. I'm just gonna add a touch to my shadow areas and so beneath the bow. Come down the front as well, sort of adding to both sides. The middle usually is where it curves around, so it's where it would be lightest. Blend in with G94, just a very small way. This color is more to help get a smooth transition happening. G21. That gives us the olivey blend, but we're going to want it brighter. So I'm popping in with my YG03, and that's really, I'm popping it over the entire area, and it's just bringing everything up nice and fun and vibrant there for her. Alrighty, now that's my image all coloured up. So there's our little Marcy. So we've gone through a lot of techniques today in this free little class. So we've gone through skin, hair, and outfit coloring, looking at folds, looking at adding little details. I really hope that you've enjoyed coloring this one up with me today. I'd love to see you share your coloring with me over on our Facebook group, or you can even tag us on Instagram at Kid and Clowder. As always, if you felt stuck during any portion of your video, or you're looking at your coloring right now, and you just don't feel like it got to where you'd like, Please remember that we're all at different practice levels with our coloring and it does take time to learn. It's not going to happen overnight or with one, two or ten practices. It just happens with a lot of going over the technique. But please do feel free to reach out to me absolutely anytime and we can go through this in a lot more detail together. I'd love to work together with you to help you feel more confident with your coloring. So thank you to all of you that have helped to us to reach 15,000 members. That's ridiculous. It's so exciting. I really hope we can continue to color and learn together over many more years. And I hope to see you over in our classrooms at kiddingclouder.com. If you've ever got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.